Hi there, this is Paul Thompson from Spitfire Audio. I'm going to show you today Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds. This is the new library, which is a condensation of all of the BML woodwind libraries. It's got tons of great extra content though, so there's nearly 30% of extra content in terms of articulations. This core package of the library contains the close tree and ambient mics, so it's everything that you really need to get a nice kind of wide variety of mix sounds. And there will be an expansion pack to this library which contains stereo mixes and also additional microphones. So I'm gonna jump straight in. Um, we're really excited about this. The whole library's been recorded at Air Studios in the hall. Um, we've got some incredible players, really, really superbly talented players in this library. So um, I'm just gonna leap straight in. I'm going to start by closing down. Um, as you can see here, we have our kind of inline help system. If you want to kind of get some more information about anything, you just click on the little I for information. But um, I'm going to turn this off um, just so it doesn't get in our way today. And I'm going to switch to the uh, spanner view of the library so that you can see all of the controls and also the mics. I'm just going to jump straight in. I haven't uh, touched any controls yet. I'm just going to play a little bit on the alto flute legato. Thank you. Okay, so how do you control the instruments? Well, the first and most obvious control to jump onto is the dynamics. So you can see that you can get some, um, you can really quickly kind of create a very musical sounding line just by altering the dynamics. This is cross fading between quieter samples, um, medium volume, louder, um, through the dynamic ranges nice and, nice and cleanly. As you can hear, it sounds great, even though it's a solo instrument. Um, you've also got control over, over the vibrato. I'm gonna show you that on the normal longs, but we'll jump back onto the, um, onto the legato patch in a second. But just so you can hear the difference um, on the vibrato, I'm gonna control that using this slider here, and I'm just gonna play a chord. So I'm cross-fading between the dynamics and between the vibrato. You can hear that it's nice and smooth. It works slightly differently on the legato patches um, in order to make them make the sound result better. But on the normal long notes, you've got a, a continuous uh, cross-fade between non-vib and vib. Um, so I'm going to show you that just on one note. Let's stick the dynamics up to the top. Have a listen. So as you can hear, incredibly smooth. It doesn't sound like there are two players. I'm gonna pull in some of the other mics and let's just have a quick listen to this. Just playing some nice stuff. So you've got a huge amount of control there. You've also got the release control, which you'll have seen about in other libraries, but you can tighten up the release so that it sounds um, much harder end to the note, or you can extend the release so that you can play kind of paddy. I'll give you a quick blast of that. So if we've got something and we want to just kind of um, busk two-handed, want it to be nice and smooth. So you can hear there, apart from when I tried to play below the range of the instrument, um, you can hear that it's, it just gives you a really nice kind of smooth, mellow sound. Um, so we'll put that back to the central position. And uh, let's jump back to the legato. So um, So you can hear it's very agile um, and you can get a lot of good sound out of it. Here is the flutter. Beautiful sound. We've got some harmonics. Obviously the range, as you can see here, the range for the harmonics is limited. It's limited to kind of what you can play on the instrument. We've got three different lengths of shorts, um, pretty much across the board in this library. Our marcatos, which are the longest, 
we've got our tenutos and then we've got our staccatos which is a nice tight one and these um you can see there's a release trigger control here which means that if you want to if you want the marcato attack but you want it to stop earlier you can keep it on that and it will basically just it'll stop the note as you lift your hand from the key doesn't play as a one shot um, you can put no short artic rts and uh, that will play as a one shot so that's the, those are the options obviously we've got a kind of the the way that the attack is rounded we've got that at different dynamics so and that's across the board so if we want to just um, try a little staccato thing So nice and dynamic, and um, we've got trills. So you can hear, um, you've got a good kind of collection of, of sounds there. When you load up these initial patches, this just really has a kind of grab bag of the most commonly used articulations across, across these instruments. Um, if you want to go in and see all of the stuff that's been recorded for one of the instruments, then you jump into the advanced extended techniques and then you'll see that down here you've got the full techniques palette for all of the instruments. Um, we'll go into there uh, later. So let's jump up um, to, let's go to the top and we'll start with the piccolo. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, dot around playing a few different things. I'm not going to go um, nuts and play every single articulation, try and keep this to a decent length, but yeah, have a quick listen. So we've got our longs. Pretty good idea of the of the range there. Some harmonics. Uh, let's jump actually straight into our staccatos. So let's jump onto the flute. Okay, get the idea. Then contrast that with the uh, fruits at two. So these are your second and third players. Um, let's start with the legato again as before. get the idea quick listen to some staccatos um, let's just put up some mics okay bass flute
beautiful sound. Let's uh, just check out with a little bit of close mic as well. Um, let's just have a listen to the longs playing some nice kind of chordy stuff. Okay, get the idea there, and again we've got the usual shorts. But with the benefit of the bass flutes, having that real kind of nice hard chiffy sound at the top end. Um, real characteristic part of the instrument sound that is. So let's jump onto our oboe. Again, you can hear very, very agile. Flutter tongue on the oboe always sounds very interesting. Have a listen to this. Really curious sound. Our marcatos, tenutos, staccatos. And again, some nice trills and contrast that with the double oboe section. That's, uh, Listen to that. Lovely sound. Let's pop up uh, the close mics and check out shorts. Okay, um, cor anglais. So this is the kind of alto oboe, if you like. <laughs> um, always blends beautifully with the alto flute, um, but it's a lovely, lovely sound in itself. And we've got the longs and the shorts on this one. Check out the clarinet solo. Okay, um, oh, flutter tongue, always got on the clarinet. Nice and raucous sound. Staccatos. And of course, nice trills. Clarinets at two. Lovely mellifluous sound. Staccato is always great with two clarinets. And uh, the other usual stuff. Nice marcatos. But also played at all different dynamics. Bass clarinet. Okay, now we're getting into the interesting area. Some of this um, bassy stuff is really quite extraordinary. So check out the legatos first. So, what have we got down here? Well, these staccatos... Mm -hmm. 
this this is really where you it kind of gets interesting. Um, when you can when you double some of your kind of low strings or your low brass with some of these lower woodwinds down here, I'm going to jump forward um, to show you something on the contrabassoon. The contrabassoon. Let's jump to the staccatos. So just check this out. <laughs> Now the contrabassoon can go even lower than the basses, than the string basses. So using this to kind of really accent and add welly to your bottom end is an incredibly good way to, to kind of uh, make your production sound richer. Check out the marcatos. So you've got some serious welly down there. While we're here, let's check out the legato as well. So you can hear it's hugely, hugely rich down there. And if we check out also, um, while we're on this bottom end tip, um, just check out the contrabass clarinet as well. Um, let's look at the staccatos here. So we've got some good stuff in there and then check out the legato, I'll put some extra mics up. So you can hear in there, you've got some really interesting frequencies going on. Not only that, but you can really feel as you're playing, you can feel the gigantic amount of effort and change that has to happen in the body of the instrument as you cross the pitches. Very, very difficult instrument to play, contrabass clarinet, but um, it's a really great sound at the bottom end there. Um, so contrabass clarinet and contrabassoon, just for adding those kind of beautiful kind of impacts down the bottom end, or actually even um, using them as a kind of as a very soft long bass. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean, but let's carry on through. We'll check out the bassoon now. And then if we check out the um, staccatos here. So some great stuff in there. We've got flutter tongue. <laughs> That's a cool sound. And then um, just again looking at the at the different mics. If we stick up a kind of quick mix, it's totally three D. I mean, it's an amazing sound. If you want to hear those individually. And then let's check out the tree on its own. And out ambience. So you can hear that with those three sources, you can get a balance of pretty much any kind of sound that you want to get. But um, another interesting thing to do, let's take out the close mics and maybe alter the balance in favor of the ambience. Something that's quite nice is to get the kind of choral sound, um, we like to call it, but with the bassoon. And check out this, this kind of sound. So you can get, even with these um, double reed instruments, you can get a, a really beautiful, soft, um, you know, uh, interesting kind of texture from them. Woodwinds are really, really useful and, and people kind of um, forget them all the time, forget to use them in their compositions. A lot of people do. And they, the textures and the kind of sounds that you can get, it's everything from that really beautiful, delicate, soft stuff through to the real thunderous kind of impact stuff at the bottom end. Very, very cool, very useful stuff. Check out the A2 and um, 
let's actually, while we're in this kind of frame of mind, let's check out exactly the same thing, but with the A2 patch instead. So two players here. And that's, you know, slightly richer sound. You get the richer sound just from the, uh, from the two players playing together. I check out the, with the legato. Um, and then obviously we've got other kind of cool stuff like the fluttering. <laughs> Um, and trills, all of that kind of great stuff. Um, let's jump back to the contrabassoon quickly and just uh, put up all the mics to check out that staccato one more time. <laughs> it's ham fisted. So you can do some really cool stuff in here. Nice marcato. We've got our legato. And then even if we want to be really totally perverse about it, we could in fact have a look at the uh, choral sound with the contrabassoon. <laughs> So, a full range of interesting things in there. Um, within the extended techniques, if we just um, jump in and compare a couple of these, you'll see that you've got all of the stuff that you had in the basic palette, but then you've got some extra bits and bobs as well, like um, this uh, Sforzando kind of attack. You've got our beautiful multi-tongue stuff, um, this is controlled by the variation slider, so you've got everything from double tongue, And don't forget, that's when you play softly, you get a tight end. If you play hard, you get an accented end. Um, you've got three variations. You've got the triple. You've got the quad, uh, the fully right hand. And again, play hard for the long uh, accented end and a short um, and play softly for the kind of tighter end. Um, then if we, let's keep flicking through. With flutes are two, we've got a ton of uh, interesting stuff in here. We've got things like the overblow longs. <laughs> things like that, we've got the short overblows. Some great stuff in there. Sports endos. Um, different kind of sound. Multi tongue stuff as well. Our trills. Um, oh, we've also got a hollow long, which is a lovely, lovely sound. Check this out. So beautiful, beautiful soft sound there. Um, so as you go through, you can see all of the stuff that is recorded with the, within the extended palette. Um, sometimes there'll be extra things in there, sometimes there won't. So for example, we've got the multi-tongue here for the solo oboe, and also with the bassoon, multi-tongues here. And then let's go. Really nice stuff. Um, our harmonics and things like that, very, very limited range. Really interesting sound there. Um, we've got our trills from the main patch. So um, with that, the extended techniques, you can see all of the individual stuff in the individual articulations folder. So all as separate NKIs. And then within uh, legato techniques, you've got all of the legatos on their own. Uh, within other patches, you've got the economic and light resources patches. You've got the time machine, but also velocity controlled um, patches. So if we look at the time machine, let's give you a very quick uh, overview of this. 
So you can get your um, staccatos, for example, and then the, you control the um, stretch. Uh, so the central position is normal. The fully left is as slow as possible and fully right is super tight. So, so that's, that's your normal one. If you do the super tight, really cool sound and obviously it's continuously variable so you can get from one extreme to the other and that's across um, across all of these instruments in here as well so I hope you've enjoyed um, having a look at the Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds package as I say all of the BML libraries in here um, plus a huge amount of extra content 30% of extra content so I hope you enjoyed this one um, and thank you very much as ever for watching see you on the next one bye bye